Boom, 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 boom. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. All right, y'all, today I want to talk about what they call um, transgenerational trauma. Okay, you know, because those of us who have listened to or know Dr. or have, you know, have heard our great scholars like um, Bobby Hemmett or Phil Valentine or um, Sister Iyanla Van Zandt, uh, Sister Humda, Sister, um, um, uh, Alayja Juan. There's just so many of our great scholars. Um, uh, Queen of Four. But we've had people who've come to us to talk about our transgenerational or intergenerational trauma. So as a people, because of our history, it is a known fact that we have been traumatized from the beginning of our journey here to Northern America. Our ancestors were traumatized by these, uh, in my opinion, savages. Um, and that is something that shortens your lifespan after, um, because of generational, generation, generational, generation of that trauma and no one has really been willing to address it. Okay. It's not like they, they don't know it. The dominant society has been willing, of course, to address it. Because addressing what has happened to us would mean that they would have to deal with their own savagery. And their own um, insecurities. Their own... Um, you know, barbaric and, you know, sick behavior. And so sometimes that's just too much. They can't, you know, you can't deal with it. So what happens is you keep inflicting more and more and more and more trauma on your victim and hope that you can just beat them so far down in the ground <laughs> that, I don't know, maybe they won't rise, huh? I don't know. The point I'm trying to make here is we should really, really take a look at um, these things that they call intergenerational uh, trauma, okay? Because in terms of our, as we're going through this little, as we're going through this COVID, whatever it is, uh, nightmare, as we going through the rebellious and the rebellion that is happening on the outside, you know, we got to make some changes on the inside. And so just like we know that the dominant society has been like a foot on our neck, literally, um, then it is imperative upon us as well while we go on this to search our heart and see who we are. Okay? Not only collectively but individually because that's where it starts you got to start individually like michael jackson said i'm starting with the man in the mirror i'm asking him to change his ways remember that think about that and no lesson could have been in the clear up if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change. But, 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 but I'm saying that to say, as far as a group of people, we have to stop our hatred for people. This is just our talk, right? We have been transphobic. We have been homophobic. Probably much more so than any other group. 
And to not be on America, to not be on African soil, to be pretty much in a situation that once we were robbed and stolen and brought over here and made to build this country, we are American culture, in my opinion. We are. So whatever culture they had, they mixed it in with us. And whatever culture we had, we mixed it in with them. They don't know, like we fixed their food, we nursed their babies. So we're all in mixed up. You know, that's why we the color people, if you ask me. Because right here, we're all mixed up, right? Just bear with me. Bear with me. So I'm saying that to say. When you really begin to think about how we're affecting the change, we're looking for 2020 to be a change, and we're not stopping until change is here. The, 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 the master wicked teacher has got to be put down. I mean, it's just that this system has got to be brought down. Just like I keep, I was telling y'all all the time, Babylon or all the great civilizations, Egypt, think about it, Ethiopia, think about them all. They all ruled at one time and they had to come down. But look at uh, Marie Antoinette. Let them eat cake with her arrogant ass when the people were starving. So Frederick Douglass said power concedes nothing without a demand. Nothing. So what you see now is a demand out there on these streets, right? So when we start talking about this generational trauma, and the, it's really difficult. I listen to the definition because it's very important to me for us to have a lot of black psychologists to deal with black social ills because we have a specific problem and a specific trauma that was inflicted on us by specific people that we still have to maintain a relationship with. And that's probably different than any other type of slavery or any other type of mind screw. Again, it's like someone telling you, they always telling you um, when you see a lot of these psychologists or a lot of these people, they'll tell you to go cold turkey or... Um, just go dry, uh, what do you call it, gray rock to the narcissist. But what happens when the whole society is a narcissist against you and you are the you are the scapegoat, right? And they are the narcissist over you. And, and, and that's the elite group. And then they make their um, uh, uh, kids pretty much the golden child, which is the other people who are white too. So, so this is the world we live in in a, in a chessboard that we're dealing with, right? So you know that they know that they've inflicted all this trauma on us, okay? And then pretend as if they didn't, but we can fix it with just forgetting about the past. Don't listen to the news. Don't deal with anything. Just keep your life um, in head in the clouds. And there are some people that do that. I got people in my family that do that, you know, and if they really, really religious and really, really saved, um, <clears throat> what they call saved, they would rather not deal with it at all. But this situation has brought everything to your doorstep. You can no longer say, oh, don't turn on the TV. <laughs> Just don't watch the news and you'll be all better. What kind of uh, uh, addressing is that for a black person have been through all this trauma. That's why I said we cannot have a. I mean, don't get me wrong. I encourage everybody to go to therapy if you can. If you can, and there's free therapy, but you gonna have to be a hundred percent because you might find out unless you get into a network where there's black psychologists. You don't look at the person that's a white psychologist sitting across from you as part of the problem. So how can a person that is upholding a system that is trying to kill you, heal you? How does that work? 
We have to be able to allow to govern and do our own self. We got a specific, a certain set of trauma that you won't have to respect because you know you inflicted it upon us. Right? So since you know that, don't come with that, um, uh, um, you know, well, where do we go from here? You know damn well where we go from here. We start this stuff over again. And you're going to have to share that wealth. You're going to have to want to. You're going to have to. And those of you that don't, that can continue to um, um, shoot people because of the color of their skin. Think people less than because of the color of their skin. We're going to have to have some stiff penalties for y'all. Whether you're a police or a civilian. Like they do in Iceland. They don't tolerate that. We're going to have to have a zero tolerance. Like they do in the NBA for fighting. Zero tolerance for racial slurs. In a country that is so messed up with race. Because of what the white man did to not only black people. But to their own people as well. So it couldn't go on. And it came to a head. Now we have people that are suffering from generational trauma and we got to get that fixed. Just like we got to get the water in Flint fixed. That type of continuation of violence and trauma against individuals that's black. See, y'all got to see this stuff for what it's worth and if you're not willing to go deeper, <laughs> as Zoe Williams said, Go deeper, deeper. Let's go deeper. And if you're not willing to do that, then they, they're going to have to stay out on these streets. We're going to have to stay out on these streets. And if it all falls apart, it all falls down, then you will realize that um, just like all the other great ones, you wasn't willing to give it up. And your time, our time came. And the reason why I say our because... My ancestors built this. And now we all are mixed in together. That's the reality of the situation. So y'all can't continue to think that you're going to keep America all to yourself when you stole it from the Native American. You can't do it. That, that jig is up. You're going to have to be more open and honest about the way you've been uh, developing and, and, and um, uh, uh, yeah, and pretty much working this civilization, this society. You know, if you if you want to go back, you're gonna have you're gonna have to put it. In, you can't even open the school unless you're willing to be honest about how we got here. Because there's a lot of generational trauma, unresolved emotion, and thoughts about traumatic events that go on with each and every one of us, and especially black people. The negative, repeated patterns of behavior that we keep experiencing and doing ourselves. I know. And in order for this to work, we got to stop being so homophobic against other black people. Because just like we want somebody to start loving on us and stop mistreating us, we got to stop mistreating them. We got to stop this uh, learned behavior. Because the heart of us is to love. That's who Christopher Columbus saw. A people that was full of love. And you got to remember that. So, we, if just as we want mercy and grace... We have to be willing to give those things, and so we can receive them, you know. And I hope I haven't rant too much today, but that was that's what was on my heart. Okay, so I'll be back with another video, and um, y'all just think about what I said. If you disagree with me, you know you do. Please tell me what you think, and what do you think about this intergenerational trauma? Do you really believe that it can it has negatively affected our families, or do you just think it's just some um, some mythical 
um, cliche phrases that people have said. Um, I know who catchphrased uh, 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 the term, but I'm asking you, do you feel it's real? When you look at your families and how we operate in terms of our emotional health, our mental health, what y'all think? Let me know, okay? And I'll, I'll see you. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.